Ladies and gentlemen, we got quite a lot of changes for technical things in Snapshot 22W42A. If you want the gameplay changes, check out my video about that first. In this video, we're going to talk about data packs, feature flags, recipe categories, and more. My name is Slice Time. Let's go. In news for data packs, the vanilla world generation definition files are now included as part of the vanilla data pack inside the jar file of the game. Feature flags have also been added. A feature flag is an ID enabling a hard-coded set of features in the game. Such flags are enabled by data packs in a new metadata section called Features, which has a list called Enabled listing the desired flags. These flags are then stored inside the world file and can never be disabled, and packs loaded after world creation will not enable new flags. There are a number of effects of feature flags. For blocks, disabled block IDs are not recognized by commands that can create new blocks such as set block and fill. Block items for disabled blocks are also disabled, and disabled blocks will not be placed as part of structures and will not load as part of entities, such as falling blocks or held by endermen. If a disabled block is still encountered in a world, a player will be unable to interact with it. Disabled items are hidden from the creative inventory, and will not be recognized by commands that create new items like the give command. Recipes and loot tables cannot create disabled items. If a player somehow did get a disabled item, they won't be able to use it for interactions or attacks. Disabled entities cannot spawn or load, their IDs are not recognized by commands that can summon new entities, and their spawn egg items are also disabled. The jar file now also contains two built-in data packs for experimental features, Bundle and Update 120. Let's move on to Recipes. Which crafting book tab a recipe appears in can now be controlled by recipe data through a field called Category. For regular crafting, the available categories are Building, Redstone, Equipment, and Misc, where Misc is the default. For smelting and similar item cooking recipes, the available categories are Food, Blocks, and Misc, with Misc again being the default. Some recipe books might collapse categories into fewer tabs, and the exact mapping might change in the future. There's a single fix for commands in this version. If you use the spawn point command to set the player's spawn point on a respawn anchor, it no longer needs at least one charge to work and will no longer use up charges when the player respawns. In entity data news, LAs no longer dance if their no AI tag is set to true, and if you modify their item data every tick, they no longer duplicate the items. In tag news, there are two new block tags, invalid spawn inside and stripped logs. Stripped logs also exists as an item tag. The built-in update 120 data pack also has new block tags, all hanging signs, ceiling hanging signs, and wall hanging signs, as well as the item tags hanging signs and bookshelf books. Let's move on to resource packs. The pack version for resource packs is now 11. This change includes moving the checkmark.png file out of the realms namespace into Minecraft. In addition to that, the game will no longer try to automatically adapt resource packs from version 4 or below to newer formats. The realms language strings now reside with the rest of the Minecraft strings, and the programmer art pack is no longer internally referenced as programmer art. Let's move on to servers. Custom world data packs can now be used with servers using a few new fields in server.properties. Initial enabled packs lists which data packs should be enabled at world creation, and initial disabled packs list ones that should be disabled. Any data packs that have feature flag requirements need to be in the initial enabled packs list to be enabled, and any data packs discovered after world creation will be disabled if they require features that are not enabled for the loaded world. For modding, first a note that with this snapshot a new release strategy for the game has been revealed, where larger changes will be published more regularly throughout the year in minor versions. This means that if you want to keep a mod up to date with the released versions, you'll need to upgrade your mod to updated code more often, but through somewhat smaller amounts of changes. The network protocol has been changed to add support for player entities being added to the world without first being added to the tab list, along with some changes to the secure chat protocol. You can find the details in the changelog linked in the video description. That's it for this time, my name is Slicedlime, thank you for watching.